welcome everyone today we are going to discuss about a new topic from the tool design drawing subject and that topic is multi day light mold so before we go into the detail of the concept of the design it is important to understand the term the day light all are of uh, all are familiar with the word daylight from the general use right uh, but when it comes to molding or tooling line it is having a different meaning uh, by now all are familiar with the basic structure of a mold uh, like it is having two units one which is clamped on the fixed platen where the injection nozzle is mounted uh and the other half which is mounted on the uh, moving side which uh, which we call as the moving half where from the ejection system operates um <clears throat> in the closed condition the both both the ha- both the halves comes together and butt each other at the parting uh, surface like uh, the core and the cavity plane right after the injection the fixed half stays on the fixed platen and the core half will carry away will be carried away by the moving platen physically creating a gap between the core and the cavity plate it is this gap which is uh, termed as daylight uh, that is for example um, a two plate mold will have one daylight Uh, that is the opening between the core and the cavity plates um now let us see uh, conditions where there will be more than one uh, openings consider a mold designed uh, with the stripper plate ejection when the mold opens at parting surface we are able to count that as the first daylight daylight number 1 and when the ejector plate is pushed forward it will leave behind the core plate where it was sitting on creating another gap which will be counted as the second daylight uh, in in short a mold design with a stripper ejection will have two daylights that is the first daylight is counted as the opening between the core and the cavity plate as usual and the second one is created when the stripper plate jumps forward to push the part out so that it will create a gap between the core plate and the back of the ejector plate uh, let us um, uh, uh, let me see uh, let us see how uh, i'll share the window here share the screen here so let us see here see uh, for example this is the uh, uh, the fixed side of the mold see this is where the registering is sitting on and here you have the uh, the the cavity and when it opened for example it opened have the core plate you have the core plate here a core backing plate and you have the uh, panel box here and that's the bottom plate so basically this is the fixed half of the mold and this is the moving half so when the mold opens you can see a gap between the core plate and the cavity plate which is called as daylight number 1 so as i said there are cases where there will, uh, there can be two daylights and one of those cases is if you have a stripper plate ejection and the stripper plate will be pushed forward 
creating a gap between the core plate and the uh, stripper plate and the core plate. That means it will create a gap here. So that, that will be counted as daylight number two. Hope that um, daylight is uh, clear to everyone. So, so this, in this case, the second daylight. So now, um, um, now let us get into the uh, detailed discussion about the type of design we are uh, going to learn in this uh, session. Um, Now let us get into the detailed uh, discussion about the type um, of design we are uh, going to learn in this session. Uh, let us take a look at the component which we are uh, going to use for that purpose. Uh, let me bring you back the screen here. Okay, now. Share. So it's a pretty simple component, nothing fussy about this, um, except uh, a few details for the design inputs are left behind. Uh, let us uh, consider this as uh, the material as, say, uh, so material as material. Material as Uh, consider this as uh, polypipeline, so PP. And uh, of course you need the shrinkage value here. Shrinkage, um, take it as 1.5. percentage and uh, the other input uh, for the design what you need essentially is the number of cavities right so now for discussion sake let us consider number of cavities this can be considered as uh, two A simple component. I think for see about it. Uh, please understand one thing. It goes uh, without saying a multi daylight uh, mold uh, is difficult and uh, expensive than a simple two plate mold. Uh, then what could be the reason for uh, spending more money by designing a three plate mold uh, when the features of the part like this uh, allows us to design inexpensive two plate mold? It's a question, right? To answer that, we need uh, to, uh, to examine the way a cavity is getting filled when the molten plastic is injected into it under pressure, right? Um, just take a look at this. See, it's the same part which you are trying to design. Look at the gauge system here. As you have already learned in the mold technology theory, there are different forms of gate. Um, uh, for some of it is already written here, some edge gate, uh, some is a fan gate, submarine, pin gate, uh, like a sprue gate. Uh, 
ring gate, overlap, and the list goes on. Let us, the, what you see in here is the edge gate here, right? So what is happening when the mold, molten plastic is injected? It is coming through the runner, and this is the gate, and then it will take a turn. It will hit the core once it enters the cavity. So what's the first obstruction? Uh, the um, plastic molten material is going to face is the core itself, right? When it enters the, into the, uh, jump into the cavity, the first obstruction it uh, encounters is the core. So it, it will go and hit the core. And just like you have uh, just drawn here, it, it will take two di directions. So one will go on one direction, the other plastic will flow in the opposite direction like this, you know, right? See this? Opposite direction. Like every line, every line will flow, and finally, and finally, these two plastics will come and meet at one particular line, and, and most probably it will be exactly the opposite side uh, of the gate, right? So this line here is called the the weld line. The weld line. That is where two plastics which flowed in two opposite direction and finally will come and meet and get welded or knitted together to complete the part that is called the weld line. There is, there is one little issue with this weld line. Sometimes this weld line will not get welded properly. So that will create a, a poor quality part. And it is a serious and a common uh, issue which uh, the molding industry faces and uh, difficult to eliminate too. Um, so somehow we have to get over this condition. Um, so w what are the conditions? Let us, uh, let us see. Um, uh, consider this. If you change the way the cavity is getting filled up, it will solve the issue. To great extent you know, see instead of pumping it from the side just go from top down see so what you see here is this sprue gate and now let us see how the plastic is, will flow it will enter through the sprue enters into the cavity and hit the top of the core and it will flow down like this and finally it will end up at the bottommost point and there is no welding needed here to complete the part. Every single line that flows will flow from top and finally meets the parking spot. See? So we can, basically uh, what I'm trying to say is we can eliminate the poor wet line uh, defect of the molding uh, of a, in a molding defect in a molding part by changing the way we fill the cavity. So here we, we, we have shifted from an edge gating, that is hitting from the side, to a sprue gate, which you are seeing here in the picture. What you're uh, watching here is a sprue gate, right? Now, we have decided we want to eliminate the, this part is very, uh, very critical for its purpose. So the customer is asking for a three plate mold and why he has asked for a three plate mold is because he don't want the part to end up having weld line. So we have to go and fill the design in such a way that the part is getting filled from top down. So sprue gate is the first option, but there is a limitation to sprue gate. Now look at this uh, uh, drawing here. What is the limitation to sprue gate? The sprue gate is getting filled from top and it can only accommodate one component here, see? It can only accommodate single cavity because it is getting directly filled from the sprue itself, right? So what, what if you want more than one component in a, in a mold? So this is where we end up designing a three plate mold hope we have followed everything so far we started by discussing about 
the daylights and then we, uh, we understood the scope uh, the term daylight and uh, uh, the component which we are going to design is with a multiple daylight mold and in order to understand why we have to uh, multiple daylight mold is actually costlier than a, a single daylight mold so why would somebody um, will go and decide design a multiple daylight mold when the component is not very complicated and a, a simple two plate mold a single uh, a daylight opening mold will do the purpose there's that got to be a reason so now then we went and analyzed why uh, what is the contest context for uh, designing a three plate mold it is simply because we don't want if we don't want the part to end up having a poor weld line defect we have to change the way the cavity is getting filled in the uh, uh, the plastic is getting filled in the cavity so instead of hitting from this side we decided we'll use a sprue gate and fill it from top so thus we can avoid the poor weld line defect now sprue gate um, uh, we just uh, understood we, uh, it got its limitation um, because the main limitation is it can only accommodate one put one component in a mold what what happens if you want if you want to design more than one cavity then we have to choose the next uh, uh, similar gate uh, which will be fed from top down it is the pin gate so now this is the instance now you can uh, watch carefully uh, like uh, this is the see this is the sprue and now we want two components so we we, we have cut a runner and we have provided a one cavity here and another cavity on the left side and we have used the pin gating system now pin gating is nothing but uh, just a reverse of our sprue gate it's having a reverse taper here see it is tapered down so what will happen if we have a reverse taper let us see what will happen take a look at this So you have decided you want more than two cavities so you have to uh, run a runner and connect the uh, both cavities using a pin gating system so pin gate as such is having a reverse taper now what will happen here is our uh, normal designs like uh, the two plate mold so far whatever you are designing our normal uh, way is to just clamp these to fasten these two plates together which is the top plate and the cavity plate see the screw here this is normally we do now if we do that what will happen if we run a if we use a pin gating system you can observe here this, this, this will not come out right the mold is going to open here like between the cavity and the core and what will happen to this how this is going to jump out of the mold there's no way out see it gets trapped here the only way to avoid this is don't put the screw don't fasten it don't use these two screws so you leave a scope for opening these two plates like you open it here pull it down so then you can pull, get access to this runner system hope you followed you can't fasten these two i mean top plate and the cavity plate together you should leave it open so by some hook or crook method you can pull the cavity plate down and create a gap between the top plate and the cavity plate and get the runner system out and when you do that if you do that either, either manually or, or what some so we are using some mechanism there are two two ways uh, it will hang uh, the the runner system will hang on it will hang either on as you see on the screen it will hang on the top light to leave the cavity uh, pockets and it will hang on the top light or it will choose to sit inside the 
cavity plate and this condition is very difficult it's very difficult to pull a tiny pin gate uh, out i mean two pin gates in this case out from the cavity pocket right we don't want this we everybody will wish, wish the runner system feed system be sticking on the top plate so this is one very important point here so the way we do design a three plate mold is you add one extra plate this is not you were you 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 you, you used to do uh, throughout these designs which you already gone through and the plate is popularly known as popularly known as feed plate that comes in between the cavity and the top plate and remember never screw these three plates together and the very reason is because you want to get the access to the runner system you want to get this out if you have to get this out you have to open these two plates out you cannot afford to just remove the uh, mold every time from the machine and unscrew it and put the plates together right and you lose the cycle time like uh, so i i told you not to screw these three plates together if it is not screwed together you are opening up three possibilities one is as you see here it will open between the what i'm saying is based on you will be opening up three possibilities because if you leave it as such the mold can open here just like every mold opens between the core cavity and the core plate right this is core plate core plate and cavity ct y let us represent this as ct y okay so it could open between the cavity plate and the core plate this is one possibility another possibility is it can open here right if nobody is stopping it it can open here there is no guarantee that it it will always open here there is no guarantee at all it can open here and this is the second possibility or these three plates are not screwed together so it can open here there is no guarantee that it will open here all the time or there is no guarantee that it will open here all the time it can also open here just like this right you can open here and this is the third possibility so how would you restrict this and i already uh, um, uh, discussed uh, about the screw system hanging on we want it should we always wish to have the screw system hanging on the feeder plate and this is where this is the first this is the choice this is where the mold should open first it should be the first opening so but how we will ensure i already uh, uh, made a point if you are not putting any restrictions on these two uh, plates uh, like uh, it can open at uh, two di three different places so we uh, we should uh, find some way to fight this out right let us see so first things first the screw system i already made a comment that we always want to see the feed system hanging on the feeder plate no this is the feeder plate feed plate right so we always want it the uh, screw system to hang on to the feed plate we don't want that to get stuffed inside here it is very difficult to get out so how you will ensure the popular way of doing it is you just put a reverse catch pin here see 
the shape is a reverse cat. So the plastic basically will get, um, let's get the pointer here. The plastic, so the plastic will get trapped in this undercut. See? So it ensures that it cannot come out. So it has to break somewhere. So naturally it will take the weakest point. It will break from the weakest point, which is the, it will cut here. I mean, it will cut, cut at the gate point. So automatic degating will take, lay, take place here. That is automatic degating. Automatic. So the when when the mold opens first, the first thing that that is expected is the automatic degating. And in to, in order to ensure that, we have installed a pin, which is a reverse catch pin here. See the shape here, a balloon shape, balloon shape. So the plastic will get trapped here. That means at this point, so it will somehow we cannot get out of it. So the it will break from the weakest point, which is the gate point. So, to ensure automatic degating, to ensure automatic degating of the component. Now, the next point is we need to ensure we need to ensure it will not open here or it will not open here. And how that is achieved, we are going to put some restrictions here in order to stop the moment from uh, moment of the plate, uh, the feeder plate from the top plate. We have installed a ball catch uh, spring and a recess pin here. So this this ball will spring, spring, spring loaded ball will get uh, stuffed inside the um, the recess of the pin and it will create some kind of a friction but it's only a uh, spring-loaded ball if uh, too much of plate is put on uh, pressure is put on this plate the ball will back off and the plate can move down right so we have ensured we have already stopped the moment of of the feed plate from the here we, we have stopped the moment here so we have stopped the moment there now, the second chance is it will open here, right? The second chance is it can open here. So how have we stopped it? Let's observe here. So this is the a rubber uh, bushing. This is a rubber bushing and it got stuffed inside this counter core of the cavity plate. And this rubber bushing is sitting on the core plate on the moving half. So when the mold is closed, this diameter is definitely bigger. It's ballooned out when you tighten the screw. And when the mold closes, this rubber will skews and get into this counter board. That, thus it will create some kind of a kind of a breaking system here. So we have already and we have thus we have already stopped the second opening, chance of a second opening from the So we have stopped that. So we have achieved what we want to achieve. We have ensured that by providing these two mechanisms, one is the bushing and the uh, springy ball and the resource pin uh, mechanism, we ensure that it will not open here or it will not open at the cavity and core parting line. So it will open only here. And in order to make sure the feed system is hanging on the feed plate, we have provided a reverse catch, we have provided a reverse catch pin from the top plate. So now it can't, now, now you, you have a scope of pulling this 
out, right? You have a scope of pulling the feed system through this gap. This is the very reason I mentioned don't not to screw the top plate, feed plate, and cavity plate together, just like you were doing uh, the design so far, because you are leaving a you should leave a scope for the feed system to be taken out. Now we can't leave the mold in this condition forever. Somehow, at one point of time, we have to get the component out, right? So what happened? Uh, how that is achieved? Let us uh, see. Take a look at the um, uh, drawing here. Um, observe this uh, this uh, tie rod or some some uh, some of. It's also named as uh, limit bolt. Limit bolt. Also known as limit bolt. It's also known as limit bolt. So just observe this. Now it has gone and hit the counter bore on, on both plates. This was freely dancing inside this counter bore all this time. When when the mold opened, when the mold opens, and how much it should open is another question. How much it should open? It's just common sense. It should be, it should open a minimum of the height of the feed system here. Otherwise, if it is less, you cannot skew the, I mean, get this, uh, you will not have enough gap to get the feed system out. So, after opening for a distance, a little a minimum of the height, length of the height of the feed system, the uh, head of the limit bolt or tie rod has hit the counter pole. That means it has bottomed out now. Now, what will happen further on the further moment? The moving half is will keep on moving. So this pin here will pull this plate down now. Am I right? Hope, hope everybody agree, right? This pin on further moment down will pull the feed plate down. And now, keep an eye here, the second tie rod here. There's a gap here, right? See, there's a gap there. Keep an eye on, on it. See what happens. The mold is moving still down. The moving half is moving down. So, see, there's a gap created here. How? This pin here has pulled the, this pin here has pulled the, feeder plate down. Hope you have comprehended that. See, take a look here. This has already hit the counter bore. You also should have a limit bolt between the top plate and the feeder plate because if you keep on pulling, then this plate can uh, fall out of the pillars, right? So, you need to provide another tie rod or limit bolt, limit bolt number two, between the top plate and the feeder plate. Now observe, for the moment, this pin, because it is hitting the counter bore, it, the other, the next, uh, in the uh, next uh, moment, it will pull the, this plate down, creating a gap between these two plates. And what has happened uh, during that moment? Just observe here. This plastic has cused out. I mean, this this plate has pushed it out, right? The, this plate has moved down. This plate has moved down. The pin is staying where it is because it is clamped on the top plate. So the plastic, so far it was strapped. Now it will just squeeze out. Squish out and it will be free. Now somebody can. The runner system is totally free. It is just hanging in the sprue uh, bush hole. It's not tight, it's already free. So somebody can just take it out. Now, what happens if the mold moves further down? Something has to break here because now there is a deadlock. This counter bore, it has hit the, it has bottomed out on feed plate and the cavity plate. I mean, the first tie rod. 
and the second tie rod has already bottomed out between the core uh, feeder plate and the cavity plate, uh, top plate, right? So the weakest point should break. I mean, there are two choices. Either this can break. I don't think it can break because it is made out of steel. Or this little pin here, the second tie rod can break. No, it's also made out of steel. So the only choice is this rubber bushing, which is not a solid kind of um, mechanism. Like uh, it uh, works on uh, on just friction, right? The weakest point point is the uh, rubber bushing here. It will skews and come out of the counter board. <coughs> Next moment, the rubber bushing, the rubber bushing has skewed out of the counterbore from the cavity plate, and thus we have the the third opening here. It has opened between the cavity and the core plate. Now the ejector ejector system can go up, uh, push the command out. See this? So basically, this is what a three plate mold design is all about. The first opening should be here, that is between the feed plate and the cavity plate. To ensure it is holding here, we have provided a ball catch pin here and the second opening should be between the feeder plate and the top plate and how that is achieved it is through with the help of this <coughs> limit rod pulling the plate down and once it pulls the plate down the second tie rod will bottom out that means it will create a lock complete lock and the weakest point which is <coughs> The rubber bushing stuffed inside this eject, uh, I mean the counter bore of the core will, uh, sorry, cavity plate will skews itself out and come out of it of that hole. So once the part <coughs> part is ejected. The mold will close and get back to its original condition for uh, the second uh, injection. And this is how it will look like. See this pin has gone back. So this it is this gap you should observe. This gap here, see. This gap should be very important in this design. It should be more than the height of the feed system. Only then it will create enough gap so this feed system can be pulled out. <coughs> See? Now it is shaded for uh, better comprehension here. Uh, you see the <coughs> registering in green, and you have the top plate and the yellowish uh, feeder plate, greenish. Uh, cavity plate, purple core plate. You see the rubber bushing here. See rubber bushing, <coughs> which got uh, stuffed inside the um, counter board. And you have the back uh, core backing, barrel block, and the uh, bottom plate. Now <coughs> you know you are not going to clamp this plate, this plate, and this plate together. These two has to move, right? This has to move and this plate has to move. So you cannot put a common bushing. You have to have separate bushing here. You see a bushing here in magenta color. There's another separate bushing here. Independent bush for the feed plate is very important because these two plates have to move back and forth. And in order to, uh, and where it's going to move, it, it has to uh, get the assistance of a railing system, right? So, <clears throat> in order to make that happen, 
what you what that uh, usual procedure is to design the pillar on the on the top down like uh, on the uh, on the fixed arm see the pillar is on the fixed arm so when these two plates has to move it will use the pillar as a railing system so <clears throat> there are certain uh, key points you have to uh, observe here while you while you design this one is the gap see the gap between this gap here k that is this gap so how much should be that gap the gap at shoulder of the limit rod and the counter core should be more than the feed system height feed system height is from the tip of the uh, sprue to the gate point of the pin gate so don't unnecessarily make this too long then you will end up making a bigger shut tight mold right so unnecessarily don't make it longer and this is how the top <coughs> view will look like uh, uh, i think what uh, you see here is that the rubber bushing thing here that see four rubber bushings which is clamped on the core plate two three four this is four rubber bushing this is the our normal bushing of the mold and the mobile bushing and this will be the uh, uh, this will be the clearance hole for the tie rod sorry <coughs> this will be the clearance hole for the tie rod this is here the other color this is the These four are the clearance hole for the tie rods. This is what we are observing now. See this? So this is all about uh, uh, the three plate. <coughs> Hope you all have comprehended uh, the basic concept uh, of a three plate mold. Uh, please uh, practice the drawings uh, with some uh, sample parts. Uh, before we close, we'll recap the uh, entire thing once again. Uh, the context is. Uh, the need to avoid the poor uh, weld line defect uh, of a molded part so we have we we choose to go for a top down uh, top down defect uh, top down filling uh, so we need to option is to choose a sprue gate but it is limited uh, to a single cavity therefore we had to choose a pin gating system which is having a reverse taper shape the pin gate is having a reverse taper shape so we have to overcome the feed system be, um, uh, being trapped due to the reverse taper nature so we added a feed plate between the cavity and the top plate and uh, added a, a reverse catch pin so that the um, runner system remains on the feed plate and provided a ball catch uh, pin and and a rubber bushing at places where we wish to stop the accidental opening which is Uh, opening between the core core plate and the cavity plate or the opening between feed plate and the top plate when the mold opens the initial opening should be we want to ensure it should be between the feed plate and the cavity plate and we also wanted to ensure that the feed system is sticking on the feed plate and uh, and to make it possible we have put a reverse uh, catch pin and uh, <coughs> we have provided uh, limit bolts this limit bolts will uh, pull the pill, uh, the feeder plate down uh, once enough uh, gap is achieved between the cavity plate and the uh, feed plate uh, enough gap in the sense uh, there should be enough gap for the feed system to uh, pull out from the uh, through that gap so distance between the head of the counter bore and the um, uh, and the and the counter, head of the limit bolt and the counter bore is very important Uh, which i already mentioned here it's the k here k it's very important in this case uh, uh like uh, uh, that's pretty much it this is the three plate mold design hope uh, everyone has uh, thoroughly understood uh, the concept so wish you to see you on uh, 
more of these uh, videos on a different design uh, next time. Thank you very much.